Hey, my name's Derek and this is my T206 journey. This is my first video in sharing the process of collecting the monster. Um, T206 is a set that I believe to be the most exciting and immersive sports card set to collect. And uh, with over 6,000 distinct cards, player bat combinations, uh, T206 has kept me busy for a while and uh, the same for probably hundreds of thousands of collectors for the last 100 years. So I have recently started collecting T206 and found it a bit challenging at times to find resources to satisfy my increasing desire to grasp the history of this set and to really expand my knowledge. So I am in no way an expert, but rather someone who is on a journey to learn and collect. I hope to share that with you and hopefully you share your experiences and your knowledge in the comments below because I'm always looking to learn. Uh, right off the bat, I will be referencing a few resources that I have found that have been really, really helpful. Uh, for me, I, I love videos and podcasts, and so the, the most, I guess, influential or helpful thing so far has been the Monster Podcast. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below. Check it out. I'd highly recommend to listen to all the episodes at least twice. Uh, take notes as well because it can be pretty quick or dense at times in a good way. Um, I'll also provide links to the books like The Monster by Heitman and The T206 Collection by Zapala. I hope that's right. Sorry if I butchered your name. And Inside T206 by Reader. Um, I'll actually be doing a little reading from that in a few moments. So these are all great reads. You should totally purchase it. It is worth it if you plan to collect the 520 different player subjects. And if you ever try to do a back run and just learning about the players is awesome. So actually this is what you're looking at right now is Tris Speaker. This is his rookie card. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. This is actually the first card that I... Uh, I guess officially bought when I started collecting the set. So kind of bought a couple before this, but this is the one that really got me hooked. So I'll tell that story in a minute. But before then, a quick reading from uh, Inside T206 from Reader. This is the introduction, and it gives you a little backstory, uh, I guess, about the, the set. So T206 cards were distributed by the American Tobacco Company between 1909 and 1911, and they were a premium insert with tobacco products. Conventional checklists uh, have somewhere around, have 524 different baseball subjects. A subject is a player in a specific pose, kind of like this. Tris Speaker only has one subject in the entire set. It is his rookie card, or known as his rookie card. Um, other ones, like uh, I think Hal Chase has four or five, five I think, um, Ty Cobb has four, just depends. So uh, some of these subjects can be found with more than one, um, more than one pose and uh, over two dozen different back types. So you'll, I'm going to be doing a video in the next couple of weeks about the different backs. It's fascinating, all the different tobacco, I guess, companies, but they're not really companies because they were all part of the same company. So uh, some of these subjects can be found with more than a dozen, uh, two dozen back types. When one totals all the possible front back combinations, there are over 6,000 distinct cards. W a couple people have tried <laughs> that I've seen to collect all of them. I think somebody got over 5,000 different backs. Um, I think that's the Hall collection. It was recently sold in 2019. Um, you can search that as well. But uh, the vast number, um, the vast number led notable collector Bill Heitman to categorize the set as the monster. And uh, T206 got its name from the father of collecting, Jefferson Burdick. The name was a natural consequence of the alpha numeric cataloging scheme that Burdick created and used in his seminal. American Card Catalog, the first edition of which was published in 1939. T was a letter that Burdick chose to identify the 20th century tobacco issues, while 206 or, two, or 206 was assigned to the set by virtue of Burdick's sequential numbering of issues. The astounding number of collecting possibilities that T206 has to offer is one of its greatest attractions. This set will keep you busy forever if uh, if you really go down the rabbit hole with it. 
There are thousands of dedicated T206 collectors who follow almost as many collecting approaches. So uh, that was a little bit about it. Now this is my first card and this is one of the top 20 uh, cards in the set as far as value or um, you know, sought after and I kind of stumbled across this in a midday eBay auction a few months back. This would have been in the fall of 2019 and I had always loved and, and really been attracted to the old tobacco cards from the early 1900s. They were the start of so much when it comes to sports, celebrity, uh, capitalism, hobby collecting, and I mean it's baseball. So really just so much about America. Baseball was everything in those days and these 392 players featured range from the greatest of all time which is Ty Cobb. If you disagree with me uh, you can thumbs down this video and just leave right now uh, to the minor leaguers that even people of the day probably didn't know about. Uh, each player has a story and I don't think any of them could have predicted where baseball or pictures of baseball men as early newspapers referred to these cards as would be today. So this is Hall of Famer Tris Speaker. His plaque in Cooperstown reads the greatest center fielder of his day which is pretty awesome. Uh, by the time Chris Speaker turned 21, he was already one of the best center fielders in the game, a player highly regarded for both his work at the plate and in the field. A Texas native, uh, Speaker began his career with the Red Sox where he had the best season of his career, which was the year after the T206 set was done. I'm going to flip it around right here so you can check out the back. It's got some really vintage staining on this PSA too, but um, Speaker earned um, uh, the um, AL MVP honors that year in 2012, 2019-12, uh, leading the AL in on-base percentage and carrying the Red Sox to a World Series championship. A tremendous contact hitter who could drive the ball into the gaps and down the line, Speaker led the American League, League in doubles eight times. Speaker led the Red Sox to another World Series in 1915, but Boston traded him to the Indians at the start of the 1916 season. In Speaker's first game, or first season, with the Indians, he led the AL in average, on-base percentage, and slugging. Ty, Cobb's, Ty Cobb, who was Speaker's rival for the greatest center fielder of the dead ball era, had won five consecutive batting titles before Speaker edged him for the crown by 15 points in 1916. Speaker took over as a player slash manager during the 1919 season, a position he held until his final season in Cleveland in 1926, which is just phenomenal. Leading the Indians to a 40 win and 21 loss finish down the stretch. Uh, in his first full season as a player manager in 1920, Speaker reached his third and final World Series, helping the Indians capture the championship in seven games over Brooklyn. Now, one of the most insane stats about Speaker is he is the only major league player to have three batting streaks of 20 or more games in a single season and of course that is the 1912 season where he won the AL MVP. Uh, some of his stats he had uh, played in 2,789 games, uh, 1,882 runs, 3,514 hits, uh, 1,531 RBIs, and 436 stolen bases and of course one of the best stats 1,381 walks with a career batting average of 345. So let's take a look at this card real quick. I talked a little bit about the different backs. If you are new to the set T206, this is probably, I think this is the most common one. It's a Piedmont 350 subjects with a factory 25, if you can see right there. Get close, get the light on it. So at the very bottom right here, they have different factories um, and people who do a back run would be collecting all the different backs. Uh, the two main ones are Sweet Caporal 
and Piedmont, and then they have different subject numbers like 150, 350, or 350 to 460, and then they have different factories at the bottom. So a person who is collecting uh, a Trist speaker background might have, you know, somewhere between 8 or 15 different um, backs, like an old mill, a sovereign. I actually don't know all the backs that Trist speaker comes uh, that you can collect in. So this was my very first card and like i said it was a a midday auction on ebay that is one of my top tips for people who are collecting is you know if you live east coast west coast middle of of the country i'm in in the united states but is to to search for cards and um i guess watch or favorite the cards that have a weird end time because if it's ending at one o'clock in the afternoon on the East Coast, then on the West Coast, it's ending, you know, kind of mid-morning. Um, sometimes I like to stay up super late, one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, uh, set my alarm, wake up early, and you can really get some good cards in auction because, you know, literally everyone's sleeping. So again, uh, my name's Derek. This is my first video in my T206 journey. If you're still watching, thank you so much. Um, and uh, let me know. Uh, if you are a collector below or just an enthusiast, and I will check you out in the next video.